Good morning, I'm Annie Larkin, the Associate Curator of Public Programs at the Amerind Museum, and welcome to our Flute and Storytelling performance with Randy Kemp. A big thank you to our members and donors who not only make this type of programming possible, but Amerind's mission to promote the knowledge and understanding of the Native peoples of the Americas through research, education, conservation, and community engagement. To learn more how you can assist Amerind in supporting its mission by becoming a member or donor, please visit amerind.org. On September 5th, we will host a free online lecture, Conquerors of the Land and Sea, The Peopling of the Fuego Patagonia with Dr. Martha Alfonso Doruri. Please visit amarin.org or the events section of our Facebook page for registration details. Then on September 12th, we will host the free online lecture, Hopi Runners, Crossing the Terrain Between Indian and American with Dr. Matthew Sakayestawa Gilbert. Please visit the website amarin.org or the event section of our Amarin's Facebook page for registration details. And also a reminder that the Amarin Museum has reopened to the public and we are open from Tuesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Amarin is implementing increased safety precautions as we welcome back guests back to the museum. And to learn more, visit amarin.org. All right. So Randy Kemp is an alumnus of the Katherine K. Herberger College of Arts at the Arizona State University. He was selected to perform the prelude uh, music for President Barack Obama at the Arizona State University's graduation ceremony commencement in Sun Devil Stadium with 70,000 in attendance. Randy is also the founding member of the Mayo Clinic Hospital's Sonata del Sol music program. Other works involve radio healer, a flute expression, improvisation, and computer tone generation audio recording with artist and musician Christopher Martinez. Randy also took part in a recording project with his daughter Raquel Kemp entitled Artificial Red, which features modern flute music and spoken word poetry. He was nominated for the Native American Music Award Best Spoken Word category. And because we know you'll want to listen to Randy's music for the days, months, and years to come, Amarin, the Amarin Museum store has two of his CDs for sale on our website. And a link to the store will be sent to you in a follow-up email to all of our Zoom registrants. And Amarin is thankful to Randy for sharing his time and talent with all of our audience members today. And so with that, I turn over to Randy. Hello, everyone. Uh I still have some uh, technical difficulties. Let me get this straightened out and I'm gonna start playing for you. But uh, I want to thank everyone for, um, just much bigger, there you go. Um, just thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. And for you to take the time out to be here and maybe give us a chance to give uh, uh, ourselves some time away from everything else that's going on and just uh, just a breather for a moment in time. So I appreciate that. I wanna say I thank uh, the Amarin Museum for allowing me to do this presentation. It's always a great time to be uh, involved with the Amarin Museum. Please spend some time at their website, uh, get to know them, uh, just an amazing place and, and great opportunities that they, they give out to artists uh, like myself and others. So yeah, there's a lot going on down there in uh, Dragon, Arizona. Uh, wow, I, I, it's a beautiful um, uh, place to visit. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Randy Kemp. I'm Choctaw, Muscogee Creek in Uchi. Uh, my family, uh, my wife is Beverly Kemp. My son is Raven Kemp and my daughter is Raquel Kemp. And uh, let's see, we are in Phoenix, Arizona. Just to let you know, if I start melting or sweating, that's probably why it's, it's getting warm already. So it's amazing how that works. But uh, the other thing is I want to tell you about my website. It is indigenousartmachine.com, indigenousartmachine.com. Uh, you can reach me there as well and see other uh, parts of my art and uh, background. <clears throat> and also on Instagram, it's randykemp.artist, randykemp.artist. And, you know, there's so much going on, and, and I, I appreciate this time to just uh, allow us to, to be together and thank you so much for joining me. I think there's like a, a million people watching so I'm not nervous at all. So and it, that, excuse me, I'm gonna play my flute so hang on just a second.
thanks. That helps me warm up and so on. You know, I, uh, I don't know if I'm a comedian or, or some of these stories just come by me by having fun with things and, and experiences in life and so on. But the things I want to share with you are kind of the stories that I get during my lifetime and things that, that I've been told and, and uh, passed down. Not so much traditional, but more contemporary because, you know, our indigenous culture is alive and, and flourishing and amazing. So we have our stories to tell today as well. So uh, if some of these things sound really familiar to you, it's because we're living right now and we have some shared experiences as well. So uh, I'm going to start off, uh, man, you know what? I couldn't find a smaller t-shirt apparently. Um, so excuse me for that. So my first story is going to be uh, the chicken song which I wrote back in uh, 2007. And the chicken song uh, is also found on one of our uh, CDs, Artificial Red. Um, and it is about a story uh, that I want to share with you about my grandparents. So when I was a small warrior, probably no bigger than this chair, I uh, uh, would spend some time with my grandparents. So my parents would drive us all the way down south Oklahoma and get to my grandparents house and there we would get there probably late in the evening so we just kind of was tired and we'd find a place in the house to rest and sit down and uh, just you know take in the the time and and the drive so uh, the next morning though the next morning was amazing because um, I heard someone walking around in the house and I got up to see who what was going on my hair was all bushy and I had hair back then uh, and I found my grandmother in the kitchen uh, getting ready to make some breakfast. So I got up and I said, well, Grandma, what can I do to help? Uh, I'm a small warrior and uh, I can do some things, right? So she said, well, if you want, uh, please go out and get some eggs from the chicken house. And I go, yeah, I can do that. Uh, she says, yeah, well, all you have to do is go outside and follow this trail and it goes through the woods and you'll come across a small little building and inside there are the chickens and just grab some eggs and bring them back and we'll make some breakfast. I said, okay, great. So I started heading out and I got to the door and I went out to the porch and there was a wire basket right there and I picked it up and I was getting ready to walk away and she says, wait, before you go down there, remember, do not wake up the chickens. And in my small warrior thoughts, I was thinking, I didn't know chickens even slept. I was thinking they were sleeping upside down, on their side, standing up. I could not really think about it. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. I won't wake up the chickens. So I was really excited. I grabbed the boy basket and I started heading down this really narrow uh, path. And sure enough, there was a little small building a little structure out there in the woods and inside was chickens and I walked inside and it was so dark I couldn't see a thing but I knew I was in the right place because of the aroma yes I was there in the chicken house so I started adjusting my eyes and I began grabbing some of the eggs oh, off of that shelf off of this shelf into my basket and off to the medium shelf, I grabbed some eggs and put them in the basket. And I thought, wow, that was great. I, I think I have enough, but you know, I'm really hungry. I'm really hungry. I'm gonna grab one more egg and I'll put that in my basket and I'll go inside. So I reached up to the very top tier of where the chickens are and I was grabbing through the bit of straw that was up there and I found an egg and I had the egg in my hand and as I was pulling it down, I bumped the chicken. And all of a sudden, all I heard was but it was like 15 times that loud because all the chickens went off and it was so loud, it scared me. Uh, I dropped that egg, I grabbed the basket and I was like, feel like I was running in place, trying to get out of there. All I remember, we had scrambled eggs that morning, so. That's my chicken song or my chicken story. So what this really means and to understand the story and why I want to remember that story, it's about uh, 
my grandparents and food sovereignty. They had what they needed to survive. Uh, in the back hills of Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma, they had a garden, they had chickens, they had cows, they had horses, and they had their own place to have themselves being taken care of. Rarely did they go into town, but it was great to know that this was my grandparents and that they took care of themselves. So years later, after I learned to play the flute or somewhat learned to play the flute, um, I wanted to keep that memory alive and that story. Uh, so I came up with a song called The Chicken Song, uh, or also it's entitled Tear the Roof Off the Chicken House. And this is that song. So when I'm going to play the song, if you can, just kind of close your eyes and relive the story I just told and see where we come across the chickens in the chicken house. So here we go. There you go, the chicken song. All right, might want to check for some eggs out there. <laughs> well, I just heard like this amazing laugh across the planet. Uh, that was so good. So <laughs> thank you again. Um, so this is uh, an amazing opportunity to uh, really share some stories with you, some flute music and some experiences that uh, we've come across. and. One of the, the, the greater experiences that I've had is um, actually collaborating with uh, my daughter. And uh, back in 2000, 2006, I believe, we came up with a, a song uh, that's a part of one of our CDs, uh, Artificial Red, our very first one. And uh, this poem that we wrote was entitled Artificial Red. And uh, it was a spoken word piece. So, it actually made it to the Native American Music Awards, uh, the, I believe the 10th annual Native American. We were nominated for uh, Best Spoken Word category. So it is an amazing piece and I am so thankful that my daughter, uh, Raquel, who will be coming right now, magically appear. And this is our special gift to you guys as a collaboration. And I want to tell you about Raquel. Raquel also has an online um, store as well. Her name is Alajua, and it's an indigenous woman-made fine arts uh, site. So you can see her and visit her site as well. Just an amazing artist all together. So I appreciate her. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Raquel Kemp. Hi. And so we're going to be doing uh, this artificial red poem and flute piece, and we appreciate that. So, all right, we're gonna give it a go. Here we go. <laughs> okay, go. Flowers bloom where teepees once stood. Settlements merge with mountaintops. My body is recyclable. My spirit is not. Artificial intelligence, artificial love, machine ready, rechargeable batteries, 
My identity is made by imports. Hollywood has documented my culture. Rain dance for me, chief. When I sit, I always sit Indian style. I drive a Cherokee. I ride an Indian. I watch Apaches fly overhead. Mascots mock me. Show me proof of tribal enrollment, full blood. Sugar, the new fire water. Hey chief, how about a light? Worn out headdresses, old peace pipe wanted for hire. Bring back the ghost dance. Indian fry bread, four miles ahead. Exit here for pictures with real Indians. Paint it with artificial red. No one is looking. Burn me a copy of me. Artificial red, artificial red, artificial red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Raquel. Yeah. Um, we're going to do another exactly. piece later on, and so we will we will uh, continue that uh, collaboration again. So, all right. So, thank you. All yeah. right. Cool, cool, cool. Well, that was exciting. Oh, my gosh. You know, uh, it, it's always amazing to do collaborations and working with other artists and so on, but it's even more special when it's your own family, and uh, I, I think are a, a great deal. So, uh, get a chance to look her up as well. Okay, good. We're moving on. We're moving on. We're doing really good. Oh, look, it's almost over. No, we have about nine more hours to go. So don't give up on me yet. All right, so here we are. I'm going to do, I think what's next is a piece. Uh, it's an, an improvisational piece. Uh, well, for the flute anyway. It's called Raven Dance. And it's also on my first CD. In fact, let me show you of what CD I'm talking about, and we'll get into the different CDs after that. But it looks kind of like that. I don't know if you can really see that. It says Artificial Red, Randy Kemp. But uh, inside is some more artwork and you know, tons of songs and so on. And so we'll talk about that even more so, but I just want to give you a reference to the uh, where to locate these songs. So this piece, uh, The Raven Dance, uh, has to do with an experience that uh, actually me and my daughter had a chance to go to Australia and New Zealand. And uh, one of the things that we did was um, spend some time with the Aborigines and uh, uh, Fraser Island is a place where uh, their ceremonial grounds were. So we spent uh, a couple of days and nights out there uh, joining with them on this island. And it's just a sand island. So there's really no hard roads per se. Everything is on a sand dune. Uh, so you can't even lay out on a beach because you get runned over because that's their highway around the entire island. So which is kind of amazing, but uh, also scary. So you have to, when you go there, just be careful. But one of the days I was there, uh, I had spent some time uh, around this campfire, uh, even in the daytime, just sitting around the campfire. But uh, I had a chance uh, to meet a fellow named Dig. Uh, I think it was short for Didgeridoo because he brought his Didgeridoo and uh, we sat around the, the campfire and we were playing some music and going back and forth and he invited me to play my flute with the Didgeridoo. And because there was nobody around us and nobody was recording or listening to us, it sounded amazing. Oh my God, you can't believe it was just it, one song after the next. It was just amazing. We could have wrote an album right then and there. But uh, I learned a lot from him. I, I learned uh, a little bit of the circular breathing, uh, just up to the point where I almost passed out. So I stopped doing that and I uh, didn't think I could even do that even further. So um, we had a great time just uh, playing music together and so on. But one of the things that happened after we spent time there, we walked down to a cafe that was on the island and we were sitting there going to get a bite to eat and something to uh, refresh us. And 
uh, it was outside behind this small little building, little cafe, and there was a big open space behind there. And we were sitting in a uh, picnic table. So we're sitting there and we're just talking about you know, the music and our lives and things like that, sharing some things. And I noticed, I looked out into the open space and there in the middle of the open space was a paper bag that was rolled up and it was kind of full of content of something. And uh, I, I just thought, I thought it was kind of odd, but there, there it was. And then we were talking some more. And as we're talking, I noticed, I looked back uh, at the bag area, and now there are some small young ravens hopping around the bag, hopping around the bag, just looking and pecking at it, pecking at it. And uh, I, I began to kind of be more aware about what's going on there. And because there was like four or five now, all of a sudden surrounding this bag. And I thought, wow, okay, what what's happening here? What's going on? And and as I was watching, I watched this adult raven fly down in the middle of all the other young ravens and went, cock, cock, cock. He was just getting onto them. And I, I, can only, I can only translate to think what he was saying, like, uh, don't you guys know how to open this bag? Don't you know how to, to live with humans? The, this is food in here. You got to open up the bag. So he was dancing around and trying to tell them caw, caw, caw. and so we are fixated now watching what's going on there and we watch the adult raven grab the bag and then fly straight up into the sky and drop the bag the bag came down hit the ground and bam burgers and fries for everyone and then the adult raven flew back to his tree but it was a lesson. It was a lesson on how to teach these young ravens how to cope with humans and how to get food. And we, I thought that was amazing. So that stuck with me. When I got back here to America after that trip, I, I wanted to create a song that kind of encumbers, encumbered all of that experience. And uh, since I didn't get a didgeridoo, I couldn't fit it in my luggage, uh, I still had my uh, other flute, which is a um, put it cherry wood um, flute um, design. I wanted to emulate that flute, I mean, that uh, didgeridoo sound with the flute. So it took some practice, but I think I came up with something close. So you guys can be the judge of that or, you know, you can give me some comments about that. But here it is. I came up with this song called Raven Dance. And it emulates the um, it'll emulate the didgeridoo. So here we go. We'll give it a shot. All right. Hope you hope you're all listening pretty well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can hear you clapping now. I can hear you. I can hear you. I hope you're you're enjoying this, and I hope that this is coming off uh, across as as best as we can. So again, we are so appreciative of this time that we're given to present to you. And uh, I'm, 
you know, I, I'm a retired artist. I used to work for Arizona State University as a graphic designer. I worked there for about 30 years and now I get to do this, which is make music and create art. And I'm just having a blast time. But uh, unfortunately, it's in the, uh, in the middle of a pandemic that has us all kind of confined to our homes and, and being really restrictive and, and uh, taking care of ourselves in those um, uh, reasons. So uh, it's a little difficult. I mean, we have to readapt. We have to reimagine some things and uh, make ourselves uh, even more available uh, to the audience. And this is one way. I mean, uh, this isn't everything, but it, it is one way that we can share our background and our knowledge and, and the things that we do. So I am very appreciative of that, and I appreciate your time for being with me as well. So, okay, wow, oh my God, this is a this is going to be a big story here. So hopefully you guys are comfortable and relaxed because I think this one's like oh uh, maybe ninety minutes long. It's a ninety minute long story. So this piece is entitled. Obama in the House. Yes, Obama in the House. So in uh, 2009, 2009, um, I was contacted by the Arizona State uh, Public Events folks. And uh, it was a phone call. And they asked me, hey, uh, your name was on a list. And uh, we'd like to ask if you would uh, want to come play some music for a graduation. And I said, yeah, sure, what, what, what's it about? He says, well, it's going to be at Sun Devil Stadium, and uh, it's going to be for the graduating class of 2009, and um, President Obama will be given the address. And I thought, oh, um, sure, I'm not doing anything. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll do it. And said, okay, well, we'll send you tickets and uh, we'll make arrangements after that. Hung up the phone. I thought, hmm, could be real, could be not. So I told my family. And so we waited a couple of weeks and we got the tickets. Tickets came in the mail and there it was. Arizona State University, Barack Obama pre uh, presenting. So I thought, this is it. This is real. Oh, I should start practicing. So... We waited for the date to come up and it was a couple of weeks from there. And oh my gosh, talk about the butterflies and just all of that happening. So the day finally arrived and we go to Sun Devil Stadium, home of the Sun Devils. And we get there, we get in line and you could already see that there are additional police force, uh, special things happening all over the stadium in itself. And so we're in line but we're in the short line this time because I'm going to be a VIP. I'm going to be a performer. So I get into this line with my family and we get through. I said, hey, I got the card. Here's my credentials and all of that. And they go, yeah, go on through. And it was great. So finally didn't have to wait so much in line. And as we got through uh, the line, they checked my flutes and everything was okay. Yeah, he's a performer. So let him through. And waiting for me, or waiting for us at the end of the line, was two secret service guys with the ear monitor uh, in place, suits, probably 6'2", 6'3", taller than me, obviously, in, in nice suits, and then a lady with a clipboard. And I tell them, I said, my name is Randy Kemp, and I'm here for the performance today. And they go, great. Well, follow us, and we'll take you upstairs to the uh, skybox area where you'll be staying for uh, the the time comes to do the performance. I said, great. Uh, so here we go. So I have my wife and a few other family members with us. And we follow these folks into the elevator to go upstairs. And there we are in the elevator. And I'm so excited. My adrenaline is just pumping about, uh, I don't know how many fast you can go. But I started asking them questions about, you know, is this your first time being here in Arizona? Uh, what's it like to, you know, be a part of the uh, the presidential uh, security guard, uh, all these things I was asking them and nothing. They weren't moving. They weren't speaking. They were just very straight and very quiet. And they had sunglasses on, so I couldn't tell if they were really looking at me or not. But they were looking over me, that's for sure. So we got upstairs and we went down uh, this little sidewalk down to the uh, skybox area and went into our, our little suite. 
And they said, well, this is yours for the time being. And uh, uh, when the time comes, we'll come and knock on the door and take you downstairs and lead you to the performance area. And we got in the room and there was everything like a whole, uh, an array of food trays, all stacked really nicely, neatly, the drinks and everything. And it was just overwhelming because, you know, that, that was pretty amazing for us uh, to be a part of, to have all this display for us. And so this little sweep, you could walk out towards the football field and you can look down at the field and you could see all the chairs, you could see the stadium at the south end zone and people were coming in, filling up the stadium and so on. And uh, I, I was just uh, really amazed by this. I mean, I, I really couldn't tell this was actually happening. But just to watch the, uh, the stadium fill up and watch all the graduates come in and, and the procession, the you know, seating, and then also seeing the stage down there. It was, it was really small, but it was down there in the south end zone. And then the presidential area and the keynote speakers, uh, the administrations, and so on. But then all of a sudden, the rest of the stadium started getting filled up with all uh, the folks coming to listen for the graduation. Um, I want to say they came to listen to me, but that probably wasn't true at the time. So finally we heard the knock on the door and I got up and it's the lady with the clipboard and the two tall guys. And they said, well, it's time to go down to the field and prepare for your uh, performance. I go, great. I grabbed my two flutes and had them in my hand. I said, all right, I'm ready to go. So I followed them. I'm right behind them. And we walked down the, the aisle again and got to the elevator. And I thought, well, I'm gonna, you know, keep talking to these guys. And I was asking more questions like, you know, uh, how long have you been into this uh, secret service business? Uh, what's your favorite cereal? Uh, all these really crazy questions and nothing. I still didn't get a, a nothing, a smile or nothing. Maybe a small smile from one of them, but that was it. They were very focused, focused guys. And even the clipboard lady, she was there. So we got out and uh, I'll tell you, there was amazing feeling to be behind uh, these folks that were making the pathway. Uh, no one got in their way. And I was like right behind them. So I felt pretty special about that. And we walked, we walked, we got all the way down to the uh, lower level, uh, down to the football field uh, level. So we're standing there and now I can see the rest of the stadium. And there they were in 2000, uh, 2009, at the time, the stadium could hold 70,000 people, and it was full to capacity. Amazing, but overwhelming and intimidating at the same time. And so I'm standing there, um, and I'm looking across the football field. I can see the stage now, and I can see the presidential area and the administration area, and I can see all the folks in the stadium and all of that. And I'm standing there getting ready to walk out and... Uh, uh, and the lady with the clipboard finally gives me some direction. She says, well, this is what I want you to do. We want you to walk from here straight across to another agent at the other end and do not deviate from this path and course of action. There's like a six foot uh, feet of grass between the chairs in, uh, in between the graduates. We want you to be in the center. Please do not stop. Keep walking. I said, great, I can do that. I'm ready to go. I'm really excited about this. So then she says, just to let you know, above the stadium, we have snipers. Snipers? Is that for me? Or, or is that just something? Why would you tell me that? Why would you tell me that just before I'm getting ready to go out to do a performance? And I like, oh, okay. Well, um, Okay, I can do this. I can, uh, not enough pressure there. I can do this. So there I am. So I start to walk out. It's my turn. It's my time. And I start walking in between the six foot of grass. I'm like right on the center and I'm walking. I've got my flutes with me and I'm walking, but I know some of the graduates and they're going, Hey, Randy, Randy, come here. Oh, and they wanted to shake my hand. I go, no, 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 don't, no, st stay seated. Don't, don't come next to me. You don't understand. You don't understand. There's, there's snipers, there's snipers up there. And I could feel, I could feel 
like that sniper feeling on me. You know, the eyes were on me. You know, it was all of that. And, and I'm just trying to reveal my flutes and no quick movements of anything. So I made it through 100 yards of walking on the field without getting distracted. So I got to the other end and I spoke to the other agent. My credentials were the same. And he let me on stage and we got on stage and now I'm facing the stadium. There's all these folks. It was amazing to see. There was all the graduates and off to my right was the president and he was there. And I thought, oh my God, this is, this is a moment. This is amazing. So I got out my first flute and I started playing. I was playing and it was echoing through uh, the stadium just as loud as everyone. And people were screaming and yelling, uh, not quite at me, but they were yelling and screaming. And it was a very, very uh, exciting moment for that time. The celebrations were, were happening. And as I'm playing, you know, I, I'm looking around, I'm looking around and, and then I keep thinking, and I've got sun, dark sunglasses on, and behind me is a huge screen, a 20-foot screen of my head. So you can see me up close, you can see me playing, but you couldn't see me looking around the edge of the stadium, and I'm looking for the snipers. And then I see one. He's nestled up there next to the scoreboard, and there's these piles of things, and there he is. Well, there's one of them, I know, but there he is. And I'm like, oh no, there he is. So I'm playing my flute and I calmly finished that song. So I got to reach for my second flute, which is this one in my hand. And I reached out really slow to get that flute. No sudden movements. And I grabbed the flute and then I realized, oh no, I grabbed, I brought the wrong flute because the flute that i had is a double chamber flute and when you look at it it looks like this at the end yeah i thought oh no oh no uh i had this really sunken feeling over me uh at the time when i said oh, okay well i'm gonna i'm just gonna play but I'm not going to point this that way where the president was sitting on that side and I'll just play the song. So at that point I began playing the flute, but then I, I realized I want to, I want to check right here. And so I looked down to see if there were any red dots at that time. So that was the end of my experience at that point in this story. So I'm going to play you the song that I played during that celebration. So here it goes. And Obama was in the house.
go. Obama in the house. Thank you. Well, and that was a great experience. Thank you so much for that. Well, this next piece, we're going to keep going because we're excited about keep making things go on. I'm going to invite my daughter back. And uh, we're going to do this piece called uh, Red America, Red America. And this piece was written back in 2013. And uh, um, it is actually on this other CD, which is probably backwards for you. It's called Artificial Red, Res Radio. And we uh, just did that, mm, I think about a year ago. And it got, um, let's see, Best Instrumental uh, nomination in Canada in the Indigenous Music Awards. And then it was also nominated uh, Best Book Award uh, and, and Instrumental in the Native American Music Awards here in uh, uh, the U.S. So uh, this piece is entitled again, uh, Red America, Red America, and I am going to play the flute and read the poem as well. So let's get busy with that. So everybody's in place. <clears throat> Red America, Red America, Red America. I've seen your effigies on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Man. Pony war shields, beaded moccasins, and headdress. Your tribal name is being used by automobile companies, sports, mascots, cities, streets. Your tribal name is being used. Red America, Red America, Red America. Mohawk gasoline. <laughs> Hollywood has documented your culture by Western movies. Sure, John Wayne shot blanks, but the Indian stereotypes were real. I once heard a man say he was from the limited edition Jeep Cherokee tribe. Sure, he's parked right outside. Red America, Red America, Red America. Mohawk Paper Company. Red America, Red America, Red America. The truth is, you're surrounded by Red America all the time. Look around. We're in your TV, magazines, movies, military, technology, and the Constitution of Res Radio. Red America, Red America, Red America. Pawnee Wildlife Preserve. Go Chunk Sports and Expo Center. Canoe. 
All right. Well, thank you. That's my daughter, Raquel Kemp, again, and we appreciate it. Yes. And what, what a fantastic time we, we've been having. So I'm looking at, um, ooh, how close are we? I'm checking my time. Sorry to look away. And uh, here we are. Oh, okay. You know, we're, we're also set up to do a Q&A. And I think we want to probably start that now. So uh, I want to say I appreciate, again, all your time and uh, uh, even your energy as well. And uh, I, I would just say thank you for looking out for one another. And please keep, uh, stay safe, take care of one another, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Uh, I'm looking forward to Q&A. So let's, let's switch over and get my other tech person here. And that's Raven, my son. He uh, is up. And oh, okay, here we go. All right. That was fantastic, Randy. Thank you so much. Thank We've you. Yes. Lots and lots of compliments for you regarding um, how fantastic your music is, how wonderful your delivery of your stories are, and is rather, and of course, uh, working with Ray Cal. Everyone loves wow. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we, I, I appreciate that. Thank you for those comments. Absolutely. Okay. So if you're ready for the Q&A, I can start uh, shooting questions at you. All right, let's go. Let's try it. All right. One of the first questions is regarding your vest. They would like to know who made your wonderful vest. Oh, yay. I'm glad this got some attention. This is a Muscogee Creek pattern from Oklahoma. Uh, and my mom, uh, my late mom, uh, Josephine Hay, had a lot to do with this. She directed the Simtris, and I think she did a lot of the patchwork herself on the top, uh, but the layout design she had some help with. But yeah, this is a, a kind of a common looking uh, vest uh, worn by Muscogee Creek and Yuchi uh, people. So I'm just happy to have one. And this was actually done by my mom. So I, I think, thank you, mom. So, yes. The next question is, is your Raven story included on the CD with the Raven dance song? Oh, unfortunately, the story part isn't. And we're looking to do a CD that actually is about just storytelling and some flute music, uh, that combination as you're hearing it today. But uh, the first uh, part of that is just the flute uh, music and no story. But uh, look for it in the coming, uh, I want to say months, but yeah pretty close. We're working on it now. So um, uh, that's a good question. So thank you for that. <clears throat> and the next question is, um, as a white person who has wanted to respectfully learn how to play the Cherokee, Cherokee flute for years, would it be considered culturally uh, cultural appropriation if I finally got a flute and started learning to play? Well, yeah, no, I don't see that as a problem, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a Cherokee flute, does it? But I would think you could get any flute that you want. And uh, again, these flutes um, are kind of designed to be a personal instrument to you. Um, so don't think of it much uh, broader than that until you just sort of enjoy it for yourself. Uh, I think it's when you go into the public arena and that you have to explain sort of the background or why your reasons for learning and all that will come to uh, uh, to the head of that question. So until then, don't worry, you, you grab the flute that you have and play that and uh, make your own songs and enjoy it for yourself. Because uh, everything I've done, uh, and this will be another story in a sense, but uh, is because I wanted to teach myself to play the flute and uh, I'm self-taught. So I don't even know how to read or write music. So there's another tidbit. So go for it. And the next question, <clears throat> pardon me. The next question is what are the meanings of the fetishes on the flutes? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for the most part, these fetishes are to help direct air in these flutes that you see when I'm what I'm pulling back is that you get to see underneath the secret and there is another little opening right here so what you can't see 
is that there is a piece of wood right about here that blocks this part of the flute and this part of the chamber. So the air goes in, up, under this fetish, back into the secondary hole, into the rest of the flute. So these are actually uh, help direct the air flow into your flutes. So the designs themselves vary. It all depends uh, from the different artists that make the flutes. It may be something more uh, uh, personal to them. Uh, we just know that these are working uh, pieces of art on top of the flutes. So yeah, hopefully that helps. All right. Okay, the next question. Uh, I, I neglected to mention that you're a, quite an accomplished painter. And this uh, question revolves around your painting. Uh, it is, you painted a mural at Phoenix Indian School Visitor Center. Did mm. you attend Phoenix Indian or another US Indian school? Uh, no, I did not attend the school, but um, I was a, uh, I went to Arizona State University. I was a student there and I also worked for Arizona State University. So uh, because that school at the time was still uh, a work in school, I volunteered at the Phoenix Indian School for um, a couple of summers working with some of the students. So probably the last class that was there. Uh, I spent some time uh, doing some uh, work with them through their homework and so on. But uh, the mural that you're speaking of is in the visitor center now. Uh, the school itself is closed. So now they have is just the visitor center and a few other buildings. But if you get a chance to go there and visit and see the uh, museum that they have uh, uh, set up and then inside the building further on is the mural that I, I put together. And it, it takes photographs uh, of the school and the uh, students that were there at the time. So I was very honored to be a part of that process as well. So good question. Thank you so much for that as well. One of our Facebook, uh, one of the people watching on Facebook would like to know if you have any upcoming performances. Oh, let's see. Um, you know, if you're lucky to catch this one, this is it for, for now. Uh, you'll have to go to uh, my website or catch me on Instagram and, and I will announce it there. But today I am happy to be presenting with Amarin Museum. So thank you for that. All right. And another audience member would like to know uh, the place to buy, learn, and join Native Dance and Flute. And to join a, or to merge another question is someone was asking is if you teach the flute. Oh, okay. That's a loaded question, huh? So um, I would spend some time um, online because everything's online now. I don't think there's going to be any social gatherings uh, as, as such. Uh, and I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a place that, that really will have a, a gathering as such as this. So unfortunately, that's happening now. But go online and, and start searching, uh, uh, let's see, gatherings, let's say that, and start there for that, for that reason. Uh, the second or third question is that, do I teach flute? Um, no, not really. I, I think I just share a lot of things that I've learned. Uh, if, if that's teaching, uh, I have sort of a, uh, I'm an artist sort of angle to things. And so I have a real creative way of looking at stuff that I, I have to learn. So it may not be a teaching type of format. So you just have to kind of hang in there and say like, what what was that about? And, and try to figure it out. But like I said, I, I'm self-taught and I don't read or write music. So that's another part that's kind of uh, uh, difficult to kind of follow through. But uh, I will just say, just get the flute and enjoy it and practice, practice, and then probably practice. So thanks. Another question is, um, are you a member of a flute circle in the Phoenix area? And if so, have you figured out how to meet during the pandemic? Man, you know, I have not got an invitation, but uh, the only flute circle I have is right here with my family. And th that's a big enough circle for me. But, you know, I, I normally just uh, do presentations and I, I, I do um, events. Uh, I support my Native American community quite a bit. So I just go and play and uh, that's really 
uh, how I, I really um, uh, take care of that idea. But uh, um, so yeah, good question for that. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't uh, subscribe to any flute circles or anything like that. So I haven't really, um, you know, done my part in that. But, you know, but I also want to show you, uh, uh, again, the flutes, not the flutes, but the flute CDs. And there they are, uh, again, Artificial Red and uh, um, the Res Radio CD. So if you go on uh, the Amarion Museum site, they have these also for sell, and you also have my site to go on and see uh, those CDs as well. And you might even see some of these things too, little stickers. Look at that, taking a advantage of, of marketing, I guess. Oh, and I'm getting handed more things. <laughs> there's, there's some of my artwork, if that makes sense to you at all. Uh, that's kind of the work I do as well as, an, as a printmaker and a painter. So if I teach anything, these are some of the other things that I've done. And Annie, you know, you know that we've done some workshops there at the Ameren, so uh, you can also plug that as well. So I, I appreciate that. That's All what right, happens when you have people around you, you know, helping you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next question is, um, did the Secret Service inspect your flutes, which I think you said they did, and also, how many songs uh, did you play that day? Yes, they did. They actually checked my flutes uh, even at the very beginning as you uh, approach the stadium in that first gauntlet of people. They checked it pretty well there and they had uh, extra security guards, uh, certainly for that because, you know, the president was there. And then they checked it again, the two uh, security guard, uh, not security guard, but secret service guys, they gave it a look at too. They, they you know, uh, I, I don't know if they know anything about flutes and, and what, you know, what that all means, but uh, they just inspected for uh, unusualness, I guess. But yeah, that's, that's what happened for that period of time. Good question. All right, I think we have time for two more questions. Yes. Uh, the first is, where do you recommend they purchase a flute? Oh, again, uh, I would just go online and start looking up the, you know, the flutes companies that are out there or individuals. Uh, my advice would be, please look up indigenous artists first to purchase those items because, you know, we need that support. We need them, uh, you know, to help them uh, through these period of time. But yeah, there, there are plenty out there that are selling their flutes and designs. Um, so yeah, yeah, just do some research and I think you'll be able to find them. And I'm going to combine two questions from the same person here. Okay. How long have you been playing the flute and do your children also play the flute? Oh, good question. Um, that answer is kind of the same answer for me because uh, my son, Raven, who is 28, so that's about as, as long as I've been playing, 28 years. Because when he was born, I was starting to figure out, well, you know, uh, I need to do something other than painting and printmaking. I mean, how am I going to make a living if I don't learn how to play the flute? So uh, that was how long I've been playing. Uh, actually, that's how long I've been practicing. So um, I'm still learning. There's a lot of things still out there. And that's really the fun of it all is that uh, you never, never get to the very end of something. And, and that really is uh, the fun part of, of knowing that, is that you never want to get to the very end of that. Uh, so thank you for these questions. I am so uh, honored and, and I uh, appreciate it as well. So <clears throat> I'm going to lose my well, mind. We've really appreciated your time. Uh, your incredible stories, your fantastic flute playing. As always, it's just a pleasure to have you um, join us at Amarin, whether it be in person or online. And again, to remind everyone, you can purchase Randy's CD at the Amarin Museum store online. They are up right now. And you should also visit uh, Randy's website, which is indigenousartmachine.com. And also just a, a small plug for Raquel. Uh, she will be joining us online on October 24th, I believe at 3 p.m. We will have all of that information up about Raquel <laughs> within the next week. And she is an incredible, incredible uh, jeweler. And I highly recommend 
our audience members joining us for that event. All right. Well, Randy, it's just been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for everything. And I look forward to when we can. Ah, I love it. <laughs> the bubbles. That's the signal. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. Well, these are all our spiritual orbs and prayers for everyone. So we would, we would like to say just be careful and be safe. We're, we're so thankful uh, for the Ammon Museum for giving us this platform. And uh, Mado, Mado, thank you so, so much for everyone. Oh, well, thank you, Randy. And as a reminder to all of our Zoom attendees, you will be receiving a follow-up email that will not only have a link to purchase Randy's CDs, uh, but also a, a link to the recording of this performance, and that should be out within the next couple of days. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, all Randy. Right. Bye-bye.